I first began having some leg symptoms, um, mostly pain in my calf. It felt just like a muscle cramp, and I really thought I had just pulled a muscle. And then I began having chest symptoms. I began having shortness of breath, uh, difficulty breathing, uh, pain in my chest. I had a DVT and a pulmonary embolism when I was 34 years old. Through those tests, they discovered I had a genetic um, predisposition to clotting. After my husband and I got married, I became pregnant and I delivered our son with a cesarean section. I then was released from the hospital and I was home for about a week. And I woke up one morning and could not walk, literally. My, my, leg, my left leg was swollen. It was like a tree trunk, excruciating pain, a burning sensation, redness, um, and a numbness in the foot. And then I remember uh, my physician telling me you have deep vein thrombosis, a clot in the femoral vein, and it was a very large clot, and the total vein was blocked, and that's why the leg was swelling. I discovered that I had inflammatory breast cancer on June 30th, 2009. Part of the hospital literature that was given to me uh, when I was diagnosed mentioned that um, sometimes uh, people who have cancer and or are on chemotherapy can develop clotting disorders. Uh, for instance, uh, deep vein thrombosis or DVT in, in the leg. And they described what it felt like. Well, just coincidentally, uh, the last several days, I had been feeling like I had a low-grade Charlie horse in my leg. It just ached and cramped and it just wouldn't quite let go. And, and indeed, I did have a blood clot and we immediately began to manage it with an anticoagulant. I was uh, 44 years old, uh, looking forward to turning 45 because I did triathlons, I did a lot of them, and I was anxious to get into the next age group to be competitive. And uh, during a training run in October of 2003, I hurt my foot. It hurt for about a week and I finally went to an orthopedic and I had a broken bone on my foot. They put me in a cast. Um, uh, about mid-December, uh, mid I was feeling some pain in my calf. As a matter of fact, it hurt when I got out of bed. Didn't know why, so I went to go back to see the orthopedic and they took the cast off and put a tighter one on. Um, that week, uh, we moved the Christmas tree from the garage into the house and my wife noticed that I was short of breath and she was saying, are you really that out of shape? I didn't think I was, and I went to Dallas to a meeting, and I couldn't control the swelling in my leg. So I flew home, went to the orthopedic reluctantly the next day, and lo and behold, we found out that I had a DVT and bilateral PE. JJ was our son. He was 14 at the time. We went to a game with him to watch the varsity play, and as we exited the gym, he said to us, he said, gee, I have this really bad headache, Mom and Dad. And so the next day, he said, yeah, I still don't feel well. We thought maybe he had the flu. But then that night, I think he started seizing. Yeah, he had a uh, generalized seizure. So we rushed him to the hospital. So was, he went up into the neurology intensive care unit, and he never left. He kind of woke up. Once and talked. Once, and then he just kept uh, having um, clots and um, thrombuses. The last thing he said to me when he woke up, he said, I said, he said, how much do you love me, mommy? And I said, more than life, JJ. And it's the last thing he ever said. Yeah. The Surgeon General in 2008 uh, issued a call to action to prevent deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism in patients, particularly hospitalized patients, to use the appropriate measures to try to do that. And the role of the CDC is to help make people aware of this as a public health issue and also to have a better understanding of how common it is in our society. People at risk for DVT or PE include absolutely everyone. It's hard to say that anything or one factor causes um, deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, but there are many things that increase the risk and uh, a number of things can work together uh, to greatly increase the risk.
There are three things that are really important for patients to know to prevent DVT. Number one is to know the risk factors of DVT-PE, to know that recent hospital stay, immobility, surgery, birth control pills are risk factors. Uh, knowing, do I have a family history of blood clots? Number two is to know the symptoms of DVT-PE, so if they do occur, the person is aware this could be a DVT and PE and be checked out for it. And then thirdly, since the majority of DVT PEs happen in the hospital, I think it's important that patients be proactive and ask their physician, should I get DVT prophylaxis? Am I at risk for DVT or PE? I'm currently on anticoagulation medication and will need to take that for the rest of my life. But I've been very lucky, I've not had any additional symptoms, no more blood clots, uh, no pain related to the blood clots. Once that episode resolved, um, I've had no problems at all. I live with this problem every day of my life, and it has now been over 30 years. It impacts every decision you make daily. I was lucky because I found it when it was still pretty small, and I uh, was able to get appropriate medical attention right away for it. So the biggest effect that it had on my life was the fact that I had to take the anticoagulants. I think a lot of blood clots could be prevented if people knew their risk factors and received appropriate DVT prophylaxis. So I think there needs to be a body that increases the awareness about DVT and PE and the symptoms in the general public. And I think the CDC plays a major role partnering with different organizations such as patient advocacy groups, with health professions. All providers need to know that DVT is a possibility. All providers need to know what the signs and symptoms are. All providers need to know how to diagnose DVT. All providers need to know how to treat DVT. And all providers need to know how to refer for diagnosis and treatment if they don't have the capacity within their practice or facility. I think the most important thing people can know is that everyone is at risk for developing a blood clot. And especially if you've already had a blood clot, you are at greater risk for having a future clotting episode. So it's important to know the symptoms of blood clots. It's important that if you start having some of those symptoms to seek help right away and not delay in getting care because delay can be deadly. Be your own advocate. I don't think that it's wrong to challenge or question physicians today or, or caregivers today because the more informed we are, you are, then the better chance you are of to take yourself out of a position where you could potentially get a DVT-PE. Why is research so crucial? Unless we understand what causes something or what triggers it or what's doing this, somebody else could experience the same loss that we have and there's just no way to there's no way to deal with that loss. I recommend that patients participate in, in research studies if they're available and the patient feels comfortable with the study, mainly because uh, there are still many areas in medicine where we don't have all of the answers. We really don't have the correct answer for how long to treat a patient after they have a blood clot. Um, we have information telling us what the minimum is and maybe go longer but we don't know how long to go. We don't have good information on which patients can be safely stopped uh, after having a, a blood clot out of the blue. Um, we also don't have information on the best medicines. As uh, many of our patients know, there are new medicines that are being developed uh, as we speak uh, as new blood thinners. So making sure that those medicines are safe. Also, there's still a substantial number of patients where we don't know why they have the blood clot. So participating in types of studies that may help us better understand what caused the blood clot in the first place may lead us to better developing uh, strategies to try to prevent that blood clot in subsequent patients. I would alert people to stay on top of your own health care. Know your body, know yourself, get help, ask questions, be your own advocate for your own health care. Thank mm -hmm. you.